This video is sponsored by Henson Shaving. Clouds. They're a mixed bunch. They're all just water suspended in the atmosphere, either in liquid droplets in low clouds or ice crystals in high clouds. But depending on a bunch of parameters like altitude, atmospheric flow, available moisture and so on, they can take on lots of different specific forms. And this year is actually the 250th birthday of Luke Howard, who came up with our international naming system for specific types of clouds. So I'm going to use his system to rank which ones I think are the best. Am I going to do every cloud type? Absolutely not. There's like over a hundred of them. Is this going to be incredibly biased and subjective? Absolutely. To begin with, we need a reference. What goes in the middle of the board in C tier? I think Cumulus Mediocris. The clue's in the name. This is a cloud. <laughs> if you ask someone to draw a cloud, they're going to draw you one of these. These are like Simpsons clouds. They're very common and they're yeah. They form when warm air near to the surface rises, and doing so, it expands and cools down. Eventually, it might cool to a temperature called its dew point, where all the water vapour that's dissolved in the air will condense out and form water droplets, forming a cloud. And it will look like this. But your basic cloud. So with that as our reference, let's go from the worst clouds to the best clouds. And what belongs at the very bottom? Fog. Okay. It's a lot more watery than I anticipated it being. Fog is nothing more than water droplets suspended in the air. So it is technically a cloud, it's just a cloud that's very, very close to the surface. I wouldn't even really put it on the board, but we've got to have something in F tier. However, if the fog forms just a little bit higher above the ground, it will form a stratus cloud, the most common example of which is Stratocumulus stratiformis. It's just such a depressing cloud. <laughs> If it's an overcast day and you look outside and there's nothing but like a sheet of white from one horizon to the other, it's probably a stratiformis cloud. And if you're in a plane and look down and you can't see anything just a sea of clouds, that's probably also a stratiformis cloud. They're flat, they're boring, and frankly they're just depressing. So they're a little bit better than fog, they're going in E-tier. Another species of very low cloud, forming less than two kilometers above the surface, is the slightly more interesting Nimbostratus. These clouds are very thick, they are full of moisture, they're grey, they're ugly, and they produce pretty much constant precipitation, rain or snowfall. The UK Met Office actually describes them as probably the least picturesque of all the major cloud types. And I don't disagree, they're, they're kind of ugly. Like the stratiformis clouds, these are depressing, but they're a bit more dramatic about it. So I'm gonna put them upper tier into D. So far, we've only considered very low clouds. Let's now go up to the top part of the troposphere and actually the low part of the stratosphere, forming at up to 20 kilometers above the surface, we find cirrus clouds. These are our first ice clouds. So instead of being formed of water droplets, they're formed of tiny ice crystals. And these clouds look thin and wispy and very different. Interestingly, we actually observe them on other planets too. So Mars, Jupiter, Neptune, even Titan. Though that's not necessarily water ice in those clouds, it's ices of other things like ammonia. The cool thing about cirrus clouds is that they can show you how the atmosphere is flowing. Like sometimes you will see a bunch of ice crystals have formed and then the atmosphere has carried them and entrained them along. One of the nicknames for cirrus clouds is mare's tails because they look like a horse's tail. They're very high clouds, full of ice crystals, show you how the atmosphere is flowing, but I think they're pretty ugly. Personally, I don't think I could put them any higher than D tier. Next up, however, are the slightly more interesting Cirrostratus clouds. You've probably noticed some repeated names here. That's from Howard's system. So Cirro or Cirrus clouds refer to them being high up. Stratus refers to them being flat. And Cumulo refers to them being kind of fluffy like a cauliflower. So this is a thin, flat sheet of ice crystals, which should be pretty boring. But what brings it up to C tier is the fact that it produces some really interesting optical phenomena like halos and sun dogs caused by sunlight reflecting off the ice crystals in the layer. So that makes it a bit more interesting. I'm happy to put this in C tier. So we've now caught up with our reference level. All the clouds from this point onwards are more interesting than your basic cumulus cloud. We're actually going to start with another type of cumulus cloud, the Stratocumulus floccus. So as the name suggests, this is a combination of a flat stratus cloud and a fluffy cumulus cloud, but more interesting, I think, than either. The Flocka species in particular, I think is interesting because it forms where the atmosphere is unstable and there's lots of turbulent motion. What that does is it breaks apart a sheet cloud into lots of little fluffy cumulus clouds that are all still loosely together. It's your basic cloud then, but just a bit more chaotic. So I think that puts it in B tier. Going up into the medium level clouds, another more interesting cumulus cloud is an alto cumulus 
cumulus. The alto meaning medium level. So a more interesting cumulus cloud, but with interesting subspecies like alto cumulus undulatus, which show off oscillatory behavior, which is like making the physics of the atmosphere visible. So that's cool. I think solidly in B tier. And then lastly in B tier, Mamatus clouds. Yep, they're, they're named after memories. These are these are boob clouds. These form when turbulence in a larger cloud, like a cumulonimbus, will cause this oscillatory undulating behavior in the underside. And it forms these really interesting patterns, especially when illuminated at sunset. They look interesting, they've got a funny name, B for boob clouds. And now something that's gonna be controversial for a lot of people, noctilucent clouds. This is the highest type of cloud in the atmosphere. They're made of tiny amounts of ice crystals that are in the mesosphere, actually near the mesopores, so like 80, 85 kilometers above the surface, only over the poles. And they're only visible in twilight. After the sun has set, the sun's rays will still illuminate the ice crystals and be scattered down to the surface. And they produce these gorgeous patterns. Like, I think these are the most beautiful kind of clouds. That would put them in S tier, but unfortunately, they are in the mesosphere, and as everyone knows, the mesosphere is the worst, most boring part of the atmosphere, so they're gonna go down a tier in A. Now let's bring things back much, much closer to the surface. In fact, the next species of cloud is only formed because of how close to the surface they are, lenticular clouds. When air is flowing over the surface and is displaced by terrain, like around a mountain, it produces turbulence. And if moisture-laden air then runs into that turbulence, and if the temperature is below the dew point, a lenticular cloud can form around that area of turbulence. Because these clouds are fixed in place by the terrain feature and the resulting turbulence, they look kind of unlike any other species of cloud. In fact, they look a lot like flying saucers and have been suggested as explanations for historical UFO sightings. Very cool, A tier. And now, dear audience, we are left with the creme de la creme, the S tier clouds. And perhaps not a surprise that the first entry, cumulonimbus. These things are the granddaddies of clouds. They are atmospheric physics writ large. They're vast, they're dense, they produce precipitation and thunderstorms, and they stretch the entire depth of the troposphere. They form when really powerful updrafts bring tons of moisture up through the atmospheric column, stretching right the way to the top of the troposphere. And when that air reaches the top of the troposphere and it collides with the stratosphere, it can't propagate upwards anymore. The stratosphere doesn't allow vertical movement. So that moisture then spreads outwards and it forms the top of what some people call an anvil cloud. The result is a vast cloud with a well-defined top and the bottom. In fact, it really clearly marks out the boundary of the troposphere, which is just awesome. So they could only really go in S tier. And the other two entries in S tier are actually connected to cumulonimbus in one form or another. First of all, Arcus clouds. These are formed by the interaction of the strong updraft in the cumulonimbus cloud with a descending air mass or a downdraft. And if there's a wind shear, so two different horizontal winds at two different levels, then that interaction can cause the air to spin and be spat out in front of the cumulonimbus cloud. And these Arcus, or in this case shelf clouds, look amazing. Like, to me, they look a lot like the alien spaceship in Independence Day entering the atmosphere. One of the most epic kinds of clouds. Sometimes, though, these clouds can detach entirely from the cumulonimbus and form a roll cloud. And that's an example of an atmospheric soliton. It's a, a wave with a single crest that propagates through the atmosphere without changing its shape or its speed. It's just a rotating cylinder of moisture propagating through the atmosphere. Epic. S tier. And lastly, we've previously learned that clouds are formed when air rises. And the air rises because it's warm. Warm because the ground or the sea underneath is warm. But that isn't the only cause for updrafts. Over wildfires and volcanic eruptions, we also see updrafts. And sometimes those updrafts cause clouds to condense. And we call those clouds pyrocumulus. In fact, sometimes the updraft from wildfires and volcanoes is so intense that it actually forms a cumulonimbus cloud, in which case we call it a cumulonimbus flammagenitus. Oh, I 
Great, great name. And these clouds are no joke. They are violent. I mean, they look violent, but also in terms of what they do. So sometimes a pyrocumulus cloud will precipitate out and it will help put out the fire that caused it. But more often than not, these clouds produce strong, low-level winds that whip up the fire even more and make it more dangerous. These things are rare, rad, and violent. Top of the list, S tier. And there we go, this is my official ranking of all the best kinds of clouds. Did I miss your favourite or do you just disagree with me? Let me know in the comments. But before you do that, I actually have another bonus ranking for you. Some YouTubers have got some great beards. For example, Rohan Francis, Tom Clark, excellent beards. But down here at the bottom, a bit of a gap. Except there's not a gap. That's where I go. I didn't shave during the last year of my PhD until I submitted my thesis. And the resulting thesis beard was awful. What's keeping this monstrosity away from the public? That's right, it's this video's sponsor, Henson Shaving. Did you know that over 2 billion disposable razors enter landfill in the US alone every single year? All over the world, people want to or need to shave, but doing so, we don't have to create lots of waste. Enter Henson Shaving. Instead of stacking lots of steel blades on top of each other and then surrounding it in plastic, only to be thrown away, Henson produces the AL13. This thing is entirely plastic free, as is its packaging, and it's designed to last a lifetime. Instead of using disposable heads, it takes a single, really sharp razor blade that you then change out every five uses or so. The result is less waste, fewer emissions, and a really nice shave. Henson actually used to make parts for the International Space Station, so this thing is so precise and so well engineered, specifically to keep the blade as still as possible, which means that it vibrates less and you get a closer shave. Not an exaggeration to say that when I first used it, I spent the rest of the day just touching my face because it was so smooth. Head on down to the description and click the link, and if you use the offer code SIMON, then you'll get 100 free blades with your purchase of a razor, and that's enough to last you for two years. I'm really impressed by them, and I'm going to keep using the razor, and I think you should check it out too. Thank you very much to Henson for sponsoring this video. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you like this topic, it was actually picked by my patrons. So every month I try to give my patrons a poll where they can choose a video topic for the upcoming month. I think the next one is actually active when this video comes out. So if you like to pick a video, then do consider becoming a patron. You get a bunch of other benefits. You get early access to videos and access to a behind the scenes vlog every month. If you did enjoy the video, please do pop it a like. And if you'd like to watch more stuff from me, then here's some recommended viewing next. That just leaves me to say thank you once again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.